Okay. Okay, so I'm starting up the uh, the Condor here. I'm going to do a flight. Today is like uh, June fifteenth. It's like we get into the server. It's always like a always a fight to get into the server there. Hang on here. Oops. This chin chin. Let me open the condor. Okay, and if I join, it's connecting. And here we are. Okay, so this is the uh, flight plan here. Okay, so it's like uh that's the start, that's where you start, and that's where we're going to land. This is like the finish, finishes right there, and there's the start, take off. And then there's the first turn. There's the second turn. There's the third turn. And then User joined your channel. Hi, Tim. Hi, see Tim. Hello, Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Gareth. This is the other guy, Hi. too. This is the other guy flying. Did you make it yesterday, Gerd? Yes. I think uh, number, was it, I think 16 or 13? Yeah, it was okay. Half of the field was uh, crashed or the road landing. Oh, right. Yeah, it was not the perfect uh, plan for this task. Uh, also, the, the Poland man, uh, Kilo Mark India, had problems with the LS8 yesterday. I see. So I can talk to them by pushing the button, and so they can't hear me now talking to you. Uh, so I can, you know, narrate as I go here. Okay, so that's the flight plan right there. And yesterday, if you saw my yesterday stream, which was, which was like uh, June uh, 13th, I had to land out and stuff, so it wasn't too good. So... This is the winds. The winds are coming out of the south, heading towards north. You know, it's 180. That's the direction of the wind. This wind speed is 15 knots. The turbulence is like none, no turbulence, so it'll be pretty smooth. Uh, variance and variations as high. I don't ex exactly know what that does to the uh, program. But uh, okay, thermals. Thermals are strong if we get any thermals. Uh, clouds, you know, that's 900 feet. That's the top of the clouds, it's like 9,000, 9, almost 10,000 feet, 9,934 feet, almost 10,000 feet. Below here is like 7,380 feet, so that's a height right there. These are the dew points and kind of stuff, so take that what you will. User joined your channel. Okay, uh, if, if you get a thermal, so a circling underneath the cloud or turning underneath the cloud really wide. So it's kind of easy to, uh, you know, stay centered, you know. I usually have a little bit of trouble with wide or narrow. And then like normal activity, flat, act normal, and then variations high and medium. I don't really know what those really mean. You know, turbulence, light, and uh, steering or streaking moderate. Okay, so the wave, the wave will be pretty good. So when you hit the mountain kind of stuff, you'll be able to get like, you know, high in the mountain itself kind of stuff. So the wind will be hitting it. This will be the, like, this, I've said in the past where it's like south facing or north facing. So wherever the winds, this is facing. So this is, so the winds are coming out of the, the south. So this would be the north right there, so it would be facing south. So however you want to take that. So you'll get a little bit of sink right in there, and then when you get up there, when you get to the edge there, you'll be able to get some lip right in there. And then like uh, there's no coverage above the, no like higher clouds and stuff, right? So we'll go to the hangar, and I'm going to use the vintage 15 meter. 
the one I like whenever I'm possible. You have all the choices of playing here, and it's like if if you some of these are some of these you get with the program, like a Diana, you get with the program. Some of these don't come with the program, like this one doesn't come with the program. So, oops, that one does come with the program. Okay, one of these don't come with the program. So this one doesn't come with the program, so it would be so this is not this plane is not active. So you have to buy it and get it active here. So so. So place come with it. Some of them you can buy later. Okay, settings. I'm going to give me myself some water. And I'm going to put the uh, fixed ballast. Okay. And this is like uh, so. It's going to start out air tow. Uh, the height. So the release is at it's like two thousand two hundred and nine ninety seven feet there. Be able to use your PVA. I'll show you what that is. One thing, you have external views if you want. There's no rope break. The rope length will be. Oh, I lost connections. I don't know here in Condor. And uh, and like penalties kind of stuff. So if you fly in the cloud, you won't get any penalties. You know, if you you get the if you plane recovery, you don't even get any penalties. So those are all depending on whoever planned this. So he'll decide what he wants to have those kind of stuff so you can't really change them. See, I can't really I can't really click on these and change them kind of stuff. So okay. So let's go back to the task here. And since the winds are coming out of the north, this is the uh, uh excuse me, the winds are coming out of the south. So the winds are heading towards this way, going this way, right? 15 miles, 15 knots an hour, 15 knots winds. 15 knot winds. So, I was debating whether I want to, the first part, so these would be the, the good, these are the uh, ridges right here. These are the ridges that are facing south. So the winds are getting on things, so the deflection will be there kind of stuff. And so, when I start, I have to start, I have to go, the start height would be 7,200 feet. You can kind of see it right there, it says 7, it says 0 to Seven two, so that's like a abbreviation for seven thousand two hundred feet. So yeah, when we start off, we'll have to like start. It'll start out. It'll start out red. Once we get to once we get that to that area, it'll turn green, and this will turn red, and that'll be the the, the uh, place that we want to head towards. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna try to you know start at the, start at the start height. I'm going to try to hit these mountains right here. I'm going to try to ride these bridges here. I'm going to try to get to this deflection here. So I'm going to be north of this mine right here. And, you know, try to ride these bridges all the whole way right there. Turn it right there. Maybe come on a little bit south of the line to get to these bridges right there. And get to turn point one. And then from there, I was debating whether I come south of that line and try to get, like, you know, height right in there. But I might actually go north of that line, see if I can you know, ride these ridges right here, kind of stuff like that, and stay north. But it seems like there'll be more of a direction kind of stuff, and I can get deflection and the ridge, ride the ridges this way here, kind of stuff. And it might be a little bit tricky right here. I might go a little bit soft right in here. And then, like, get to the turn point uh, two. And then. This is where it's going to be tricky because the winds are coming this way. So these these are have like a really good deflection angle right in there kind of stuff. So they're going to be fighting it all the way here. Kind of stuff to get to the turn point three. Maybe I can get some thermals right in there or something. something. Right there you might be able to come. That's like facing south right there. Can I see right Did there? Did you have uh, thunderstorms yesterday in uh, Flensburg yet? No, not thunderstorms. A lot of rainy rain yesterday. A lot of um, litters. Yeah. So I might be if I'm low, I might be able to get something in there. You know, figure eight right in there and get something, and then go to turn point three, and then like uh, maybe right. But today ride, it's uh, really very hot. Maybe ride it all the way there, kind of stuff like that. Yeah, right. the same here. So we'll see. See, make sure my my planes are just make sure my right planes selected. Okay. Make sure I got the water. Okay, the winds. Make sure okay, I'm correct with the winds. 
and okay we'll start it up okay uh, you might hear you might hear a lot of like uh, bumping coming through the microphone because i'm in vr i'm using the oculus rift headset and the microphone is on the headset so if i touch it and bump it kind of stuff you get these little wild noises you know sorry about that i can't really do anything about it except for edit it later kind of stuff and i don't really want to <laughs> edit the sound later you know take too long yeah i just want to try to do these without editing kind of stuff all right all right So we gotta wait for it to load up. And I'm gonna say something to Tim here. So where were you yesterday, Tim? Very good. I said we missed you yesterday, Tim. You your channel. Yeah, I I was playing cards. I was playing bridge with some uh, friends. Oh, good. You know, take a day off, you know. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Nicola. Okay. So, checking my control surfaces. Which ladder will be nice for today's task? Yeah, I don't know. I took the LS4. But it yeah, might, I too. It, it Please, might, might be course. very hard against the wind. I'm gonna take the EB because to me it seems kind of complicated. Yeah. So here's the field right here. I'm on the uh, up. I'm on the uh, a sky view here kind of stuff. I can change my views from my flight stick. Okay, I'm done. So, there's a change right there, there's another view right there. There's me, ATT, I'm in a vintage 3, 15 meter meter. You know, everybody else has, you know, this is kind of like an open class, so you can fly, you can take whatever glider you want. Alright, there's the field. Okay, and there's the uh, tow planes that are lined up, you can see I'm pretty far back. <laughs> So it'll take a little while for me to get up in the air. There goes a tow plane landing. Those are AI tow planes. So this is the field. There's and there's me right there. <laughs> and it's, it's just a pilot representing me. <clears throat> and uh, there's my plane. Uh, you can see on the side it's E U H I G A, and there's my uh, A P P. That's the uh, pilot identification. The uh, Ventus three fifteen. That's the uh, name of the plane, and then it says like zero point zero. <clears throat> that's the uh, nautical miles kind of stuff. So when you're in, in the air. It shows you how far you're away from people kind of stuff. So that'll change com according to where people are. So you can see up there in the air, right there, where it says like 2.5, 3.3. So on um, 3 point, say the say one that says JET, G-A-T. He's flying the ASW-20 and he's 2.5. 4 nautical miles away from me because I'm on the ground and he's up there in the air. Alright. So now we just have to wait. We'll just wait here. Okay. So if you've never flown with me before, the uh, indicator, the instrument panel is right there. It's right in front of me. That's my joystick. That's my rudder panel. These are my, uh, uh, my day brakes. These are my flaps. This is my wheel up and down. 
so I can't really do that on the ground. But like, we'll show you. We'll show you. Okay, these are the. This, this is my rudder right there. You can see back here in my tail. This is my. Uh, in my here. Elevator. Yeah, I know. This is the ailerons. Why you doing? This is the flaps. I don't know if you can tell they're going up and down. It's kind of hard to tell. And these are my dive brakes. Okay. You actually can kind of see me. You can kind of see me moving them in the uh, glider. I've never seen that before. Huh. Okay. And then you can see my. And you can see me working the joystick. All right. <laughs> so let's get back and then the cock pick. Cock pick. Cockpit view and uh, okay, this instrument panel. Okay, the uh, far left one that I'm looking at, it's in the center of the uh, view, is the uh, turn indicator. The uh, top one up there is my, uh, <coughs> my speed indicator. Below is my altimeter. In the middle here, this big uh, screen here is the uh, PDA that shows me my maps uh, my headings and uh, 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 this page has um, this is another page that shows my distance from the uh, from the, uh, the turn points and then the DDH and DDH those are my heights and TT is the time to go and ETA is the uh, estimated time of arrival kind of stuff that's a, it's a little I don't really use that much. Okay, to the uh, to the right of that, the top one is the uh, digital variometer. Okay, so you, when you hear that, that's where that sound's coming from. The very top there, we're like 3,965 feet. That's the sea level right there. Okay. Oh, actually, that's above sea level. So, so we're that high above sea level. Okay, the next one is my uh, MC, McGreedy kind of stuff. So I'm going to actually set that. I'm going to set that to like, uh, I'm going to set that to a point. Oops, oops. Actually, that's the, uh, I was wrong. The below one, that's my McGreedy setting. And the other one, the V plus thing is uh, how high, how fast or how slow I'm going down. How high, how fast I'm going up, or how fast I'm going down. Okay, so it's from like uh, I'll, I'll explain it to you when, when we get in the air. Okay, so it's in feet per minute. Okay, below that is the uh, mechanical variometer kind of stuff, and you can see it's at zero because I'm level. And the same thing, it'll, it'll show how. If I'm going up or down. So if I'm going above those numbers, I'm going up. If it's going below that zero, I'm going down. And then that's the compass. There's a kamikaze time pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and these are all my screens. Okay. And it, sh it shows that the winds, this is the wind screen. The winds are actually coming out from the uh, south. So, uh. So, uh. It shows relative to my direction, so that's actually south that way. As I'm looking right there, those mountains right there, that's south, and that's uh, that's north, and that mountain is facing north right there. So I'm heading east, and behind me is west. Okay, and then that's my yaw string right there, which shows me if I'm flying straight. And then the wind's like pushing that yaw string, so the winds are coming out that way. So, so you know as much as I do, that's the uh, that's my radio down there, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make sure my uh, flaps are at zero. And I'm going to check my trim. So that's my trim right there, so I can kind of like set the... I set my trim. You know what that is? You know, that's... So you don't want to, like, hold, like, this sort of thing right there when you're flying 
straight. So you want to set your trim so you can kind of like set your speed and your speeds and stuff like that. You know, maybe it'd be more interesting to you if you knew what I was talking about kind of stuff, but like, uh, and that kind of stuff. But this is a program. <coughs> I'm, I'm not sure how much it costs. Like, it keep, uh, um, it's a, a 60, I think it's around a $60 program. It comes with a lot of, like, gliders. You can fly it VR, and you can fly it flat screen. Uh, it's specifically designed for gliders, okay? And it's the best glider simulation out there. Some of the other ones, like X-Wing and, like, the new Microsoft, and there's, like, Aeroflight and a couple of the other ones kind of stuff. They do have gliders and helicopters kind of stuff, but they're, like, the second thoughts. And, stuff. and this one is specifically designed for gliders, and it's really good. Uh, it has really good um, real, realistic kind of stuff. So it's really, if you can fly and, and condors really well, you can pretty much hop into a real glider and uh, with, a, with, a, with with instructors and pretty much, you know. Keep it aloft, kind of stuff, and with an instructor, with an instructor, make sure you have an instructor with you. Don't just hop into a plane and start flying. Make sure you have an instructor. Oh, this guy was like one of those like self-launching planes right there, kind of stuff, so he can launch himself. And those are kind of good for if you're flying and like uh, you get into trouble, you can't get a thermal, and you're in the mountains and. And you can't land anywhere, you can pop that baby up there and keep yourself safe. Okay, a lot of the gliders now are like having these like little engines. So that's little engines. And it's not to keep you aloft, and not to keep you, not to get you climbing and get you back into a thermal kind of stuff. So here I am, I'm on I'm second now. And I'm almost ready to take off here. So, <coughs> you can see the woods. You can see that it's like a crosswind. <clears throat> Cause you see my my yaw string, that red uh, string right there. So I gotta give it a little bit of a little bit of like a left rudder, cause I'm gonna tend to want to face the wind there as I take off. So I'm gonna give it a little bit. You might see me go a little bit left, and I'll just adjust as the uh, tow plane. You can see that one glider. See how he's going left right there? Yeah. See, he didn't give himself enough left rudder so he kind of weather veined in there kind of stuff so I don't want to do that too much and here comes my tow plane and I'm gonna lower that uh, volume a little bit right there that's my very armor okay Okay, here we go. And we're off. So the idea is to try to stay behind the uh, tow plane as much as best you can. Some people don't like the uh, tow plane. Mostly people who don't know how to fly a tow plane. But I like the tow plane. Gives it a sense of reality. Because you gotta watch it here. What happened, Nicola? That's not in. Getting a little bit of slack here. I'm going to stay like a kind of a certain height. I'm going to stay 
It's the kind of sight view that you kind of want. This is what I was taught when I was flying real gliders. So when you hear that beep going really fast, sorry, I had to like concentrate there a little bit. So you're hearing that beep going really fast like this now. That means I'm climbing, and when it's like going like that, that means I'm going lower. <laughs> It means I'm in sync. So fast beat, good. Low tone, bad. And you're always either going up or down in the glider, so it's one or the other. So obviously I'm getting, I'm being towed up higher by a tow plane. And so red on that, you see those little squares on the inside there? Red's good. On the side of the, uh, my uh, digital variometer, that's good. Yes, that means I'm, being, I'm going, going higher. And I'm going like 750 uh, feet per minute, plus 7. Okay, and then when it's blue, And when those little squares are blue and they're below, you'll see that. I'll, I'll point that out to you. Then I'm going down. And there are those are all the other gliders in the air right there. They're in this contest. Okay, now he's waggling his wings right there. That means he wants me to release. So I'm going to release. I'm going to turn right. And he's going to turn left. He actually did it this time. Huh. Okay. Kind of heading the wrong way here. Okay, so the race is actually supposed to be on. Okay, this is the mountains that we talked about earlier. Okay, I want to kind of like, okay, you can see that little area right there? I'm going to zoom in right there. That's the green area. I'm actually started. Wow. Huh. Okay, so I'm actually starting here because it's supposed to be red there. But I want to head to those big, those big high mountains right there. So we're getting some deflection here. So I want to head towards those big higher mountains right there, and I want to be heading the right direction. <laughs> so you can see the reflection off the mountain here, because I can see the mountain down there right there, and getting reflection there. So kind of want to ride, and then if I go to the, the leeward side, which is the back side of the mountain, I get sink. But this way here, on the wheat, <coughs> on, on, on the uh, least leeward side of the mountain right here I should get some some thermal here kind of stuff so okay
I actually want to get closer. <coughs> I actually want to get closer. Well, where that other glider is right there, kind of stuff right there. See if I can yeah. get back in. Yeah, what's happened? Which problems? Let's see if I can no, I can't restart because I didn't I crashed that. I the... can't stay in at that for time when I have connected one. I saw disconnected but fly later. I decided to only connect them and wait. But uh, when I tried to join them, after like uh, 10 minutes in uh, All right, well, I crashed. Well, <laughs> I tried to get to, mountain, there, uh, to get to the higher part of the mountain there. And they didn't... to the higher part of the mountain there, right, kind of stuff, which like... Uh, enter the flight. Let's I see if I can join her again. Doubt it. Next time, if it goes uh, so, I'm going to try to join first uh, and uh, take my glider in yeah, another a path so I wait. Reach. Uh, and uh, and uh, and later I take off. So maybe I'll try to uh, go and uh, do spectator mode. So I'm in spectator mode here. Flying around uh, Garrett's uh, Garrett's plane here. Go to the top. Go to the bottom. Using my mouse to fly around him. So I go around him. Not really flying around him. So you can kind of see where he is. I'm in uh, VR watching him kind of stuff so I can see him in third dimension. At the top of him. This chase view. You can see he's heading for these mountains. And you kind of have to get over them or find a spot to get past them. Speed's kind of slow. Watch that mountain. Watch it. Watch it. Okay. <laughs> he didn't hit that with his wingtip there. So you can kind of see the view here, kind of stuff. So, a lot of like uh, glider pirates, I think uh, Garrett and Tim, who I'll switch over here in a, in a few minutes with, if they were racing in real life, they probably wouldn't be flying uh, in these sort of mountains here unless they had like an engine that they could use to escape. So you take more chances in uh, simulated flying than you probably would in real, real life. Unless you really had experience and you really knew the wind conditions kind of stuff because he's in sync right now. And right now, okay, he's gaining some height right here going towards this mountain.
So it's getting, oh, it's getting a lot of like uh, rising air off of this mountain here. So he might be able to get over the top of this like uh, hill. Oh, but now he's sink again. So he's gonna try to go for that little that little part right there and see if he makes it. Okay, he's got rising air. He's got rising air. He's got rising air. Oh, oh, oh! He's got speed. He can probably make it over. Oh, just made it over. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. Yeah. You just made it over there, Garrett. Just made it over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm flying with you here. <laughs> yeah. A lot of guys are waiting here. So I think he's, I believe he's trying to figure out what he's going to do here. I don't know, he might have caught a thermal here. It doesn't really look like it. I have a screen here that you can't see. It's not uh, being pushed out on the... Uh, on the screen here. Because I'm in VR and I'm and recording the... Uh, recording my screen on OBS so you don't get the same view okay so I'm gonna try to switch over to Tim here so this is this is Garrett right here GBO he's an Ellis 4 which is a good glider that's one of the ones that's that is one of the ones that you'll have to buy if you get Condor, but only like, uh, I mean only like 10 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. So, oh, here we go, he's in, he's in danger here again, he's got to like get over this, over this ridge here, and over this mountain. But he's like turning, because he doesn't believe he has the right to think, but he does have a, a climb here, he can't climb. So we kind of figure eight here in this like rising air here. Let's see if we can get over it. Going up to 10 knots per minute, and it's going back down. So he's kind of climbing, going up and down, up and down. So he'll probably, he's probably <coughs> but he's getting more height than he's losing. This is about 9,000 feet, 9,180 feet. So he's struggling. Okay, 2, 9,272 feet. So he's, he's gaining altitude. He's probably going to have to gain at least 1,000 feet there.
Let's see if he can, can make it. It's getting close. Got another little bit of a climb here. I'm not going to talk to him because I want him to concentrate on what he's doing. So he's like 9,500 feet. So he's like figure eighting right here around this rising air. The uh, wind is like deflecting off of these mountains here. Kind of stuff which is giving him the ability to like uh, climb. He's 9,600 feet. So he might go for it here. Well, he lost a little bit of it. So he's getting a little rising air on this little section here. So it looks like he's going to go for it. So you'll probably try to go for that little low section right of the mountain right there. To try to get some speed up. Pull up on his stick right there. And he made it. So now he's trying to try and get some speed. So you can get over this little other ridge part right here. And he's made it again. So now he's got a little bit of a valley here. Let's see if he's getting a little bit of lift on this little ridge here. This little mountain ridge right here. And it looks like he does. Because he's getting something. Yeah, he's getting, he's getting a little rising air here. He's like 9,400, 9,500 feet. And he's getting, oh, he's got a lot of rising air here. A lot of rising air. Maybe kind of hard for you to tell, but I can see the numbers going up and down here. And he's doing a little turn in here. There's no cloud above him, so he's just using the ridge. So he's going to figure eight. So it's the same pilot as me <laughs> and her. We're all clones. <laughs> so it's like uh, almost 10,000 feet here. And he's, he's, uh, he's 10,000 feet. Man. Good flying. I'm going to talk to him a little bit here. Good flying here, Garrett. Good flying. What do you see? I said get a good flying, Garrett. Good flying. Yeah. Okay, we are with uh, Tim here. Finally, it took me a little while to, to, to get it to work here. In VR kind of stuff, it's kind of like this strange thing. This is spectator mode, and that's like Tim. And he's caught up to uh, Garrett there. You see Garrett down below. Garrett's kind of low, Tim's high. It's like I'll uh, talk to Tim here. Tim's the one who has the uh, live stream. 
So you might actually hear this on his live stream. Hey Tim. <laughs> you fall past, you caught up to Garrett and you're passing him now. And he's like low and you're really high. Yep. <laughs> Oops, I accidentally switched over to, oh, this guy's crashing. Well, it looks like he's crashing. Ah, it didn't crash. Well, uh, oh, he landed on that one. Glider on the ground. See, so you get back to Tim there. There's Garrett. He's on the final glide, too. These are some of the other gliders that are behind uh, Tim and Garrett. There's Tim. He might be on a final glide. They're heading towards the airport there. <clears throat> you can see he's 0, 0.0, and like you can see GBO, which is Garrett. Garrett, he's like a. Uh, 1.3 nautical miles behind them. And those other ones, those other gliders are behind Tim too. So Tim's flying like 151 knots per minute. He's at 4,000 feet, which is basically the, the uh, ground's this, this uh, airport's above sea level, so probably like 50, 50 feet above the ground or 100 or 500 feet or so above the ground. It's heading for the airport. Let's see if we can get behind him. God damn it. I can't get behind him. Like I said, it's a little jinky here with this, like, uh... So, let's see. But... <laughs> So here he is, he's coming into the airport, or he's coming into the uh, final part here, going as fast as he can to get there so he can get a good time. There we go.
And I was racing for the end right there. Watch out for those trees. Okay, it looks like he made it. I kind of gra I'm going to congratulate him. Con congratulations, Tim. Thanks. Come on, Tim. You're almost there. Hard, hard work here to go. You made it too, right, Garrett? Say again. You made it too, right? No, uh, GBO. No, I said you're about to make it too, right? You're about to make the uh, final. You're about to make it too, right? I not understand. I'm short higher finish. So, miscommunication here. Uh, but I see Tim's dumping his water. You see all that stream right there? That's all water. So he's watering the grass and watering the trees down there. And so now he's flying towards the airport there. Which is out there in the distance. So this is the way you're supposed to fly. <laughs> and the way you're supposed to make it. I'm still new at Condors. And, uh, congrats, Kev. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> okay, congrats. That's what I was trying to say before. I thought uh, I thought you had made it already. So it takes a long while to dump your water. I see you dumping water there, Tim, but it, it takes a long time for the water to, to, to be dumped. It's surprising. you like, been watering the trees for the last mile there. Yeah, sometimes you might hear you might hear a little, little zip or a little you might see the uh, plane jump or jitter or sway or something like that. That's uh, because of the uh, oh, he just loaded his his like uh, landing gear, so he's coming in for a landing. Uh, that's the uh, since we're all on the Don't server. To the airport, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. It's a long way to the airport. Uh, that's the uh, servers and the uh, lag time, you know, over the internet. So the uh, plane will lose its connection to it, kind of stuff, and it'll jink or jab or speed up to catch up or whatever. So. 
That was not so easy today. No. So I'm going to uh, go offline and fly this by myself offline since I crashed. And uh, I had a plan and I want to see if it would work. So after the... Uh, so you can fly it during the contest and you can fly it afterwards. So you can like say, say like you're new to this and uh, there goes this landing gear again. You raise it up and you raise it back down. Uh, you can fly these offline because you can get them uh, like uh, you can get them uh, after the contest. You can get the uh, flight plan and you can load it up into Condor and you can fly this very same contest by yourself. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get Tim's and uh, well, I can probably only get one. So I'll get Tim's and uh, maybe uh, Garrett's too if I can get two of them. And you can fly along with these two guys. And here he is landing. It's a nice smooth landing. See these guys' dive brakes out, and that helps you come down. Usually, I keep my dive brakes out so I can stay on the ground. I don't like bouncing. And uh, you can he, he land it off the runway since there's a lot of like gliders kind of stuff. A lot of times they don't land on the the, uh, the runway kind of stuff. And so. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Wow. Sehr schön. Yeah, they were good. So let's go to Garrett to see if we can find Garrett's. So as I was saying in the video, you can download the uh, the contest, and you basically can get them from here. So you have to uh, you have to sign up for a Condor, sign up for Condor Condor Club. You know, I'll link the uh, I'll link to the uh, the site. And of course you have to sign up right and then that's uh, your password and that's out this is after you buy the program. You know, you wanna do this and you can go to the contest. Usually what I do is I go to under here in the pilot and You can go to the, 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 the competition page too. Okay, so, so these are all the competitions right here, and you can sign up for them. Okay, so the only one, the only one that really has a lot of people in it is the Chin Chin, and sometimes the uh, the one called Euro kind of stuff. The Chin Chin's always there, but it's not you don't know, sign up up for it kind of stuff. It's just always on. And so they have a lot of these contests and stuff like that, and some people, some sometimes people. Sometimes there's some people in there and sometimes there's not and you basically just go to the task and go to the competition and you can download that particular task right there. Okay, so the Chin Chin one, what I normally do is I get, just go to the pilot, pilot ranking kind of stuff. I'll go to... Tim's right here. This is Tim. It's like T T. Eh, it's a Tinky, Tinky, whatever kind of stuff he, he uses for his pilot uh, name, kind of stuff. And you can always go to the latest one, right? Just like uh, just go there, and like you can download the flight deck, so you can see the name of it. That's usually, usually you find a chin chin one kind of stuff, right? Let's see, if, does it say what it is? You can kind of see his flight path right there. How many turn points are where? I'll let you figure it out. Kind of, it's kind of it's a little tough at first, but once you get used to it, kind of stuff. Go to the channel, watch the channel, and then come back and see his flight kind of stuff. You can download it right here. Guys, I said, download the flight track. 
OK. And I would go to Tim and see, that's the Alpine one, so that's usually a Chin Chin one. But like, it, it, they can, that's the landscape, they can, it can, it can vary. Depending on who, uh, depending on who, um, made the flight plan uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, Jeez, what am I trying to say? Who, it depends on who created the contest. Who created the flight plan for this particular contest. Alright? And this is the days, and, and this is the June 14th one. Today's one. So, you, uh, well, the day is ju today is June 14th when I'm recording this kind of stuff, so. Alright, so, you know, you can get them there. But the big thing is to sign up for the, uh, Sign up for the Condor Club. And like I said, you can go for any competition you want. But the Chin Chin one, the, that's, yeah, it's, that's T C H I N, Chin Chin. That's the uh, one that's the most popular. And uh, you have to uh, let's see. Where can I go? So you have to the um these these competitions are are worldwide kind of stuff. Okay, so it's a worldwide, and so the start time might not be the same start time as your your start time. So it says June at five p.m., but that's that's in Europe. Kind of so so what you have to do is uh, like I said, it's pretty it's like pretty involved. So what you have to do is get the UTC time. Let's see if I can find it here. UT here here's UT UT <coughs> here's the UT the UTC time. And then go to the website here. And I'm gonna link to this one too in the description. And you can see wherever you are. So whatever the UT the UTC time is, and like wherever you are, the site will pretty much automatically like uh, give you the right time for your for your particular area. So the UTC time for this is seven is eight thirty in the morning. So here is eight thirty in the morning. Oops, wrong one. Hang on, hang on a second. I'll get it right here. Okay. I think next time I go on the spectator mode, since you guys can't like, uh, since you guys can't see it in three D anyway, I might as well just like go into this a flat screen and there's Garrett right there he's landing right there GBL right there he's landing right now very nice Kev and he's landing right next to you yeah oh, <laughs> oh he crashed or, or he Oops. <laughs> or, oh or, yeah top 10 that's that's great for me yeah yeah very nice congrats and Tim the first one yeah, congrats too. Thanks. What they're talking about is they can both see the uh, ratings of all the uh, pilots kind of stuff. There's a big, there's a nice chart. User which, uh, disconnected from your channel. Which is kind of hard to see. Is there anybody else I can go to? You're still in the end. Okay, which one is still in there? So yeah, uh, <coughs> so it's probably uh, might be first. Yeah. This is what I need here. You can probably see this now on the screen here. You can see that it's F2, B something, and it's using the ASW 20. The speed is 148 miles an hour. His altitude is 3,000 feet. That's because he's coming in for a landing. Oh, oh he flew through the hangar right there. And uh, he's heading, he's like, uh, 
Now he's changing his head into a gun around a circle. He's very ominous, you can see he's going up. And now he's changing a matter of longitude and latitude kind of stuff as well. But that's the thing you can't see in VR. I'm in the VR mode, so, so if I go to the, the VR mode, right there, you can't see the, can't see the numbers. So, when I get the heads all on, I'm looking in VR mode, I can't see the numbers. Oh, he flew through it again, that's twice. He flew through that little hangar. Got that pretty good control of this plane. You have to hang right there, you just flew through. Background. Get this back to the uh, flat screen now. Sorry about the noise. Like I said, I'm holding my, I'm holding my headset. And so whenever I move my fingers over there, your head's a little scratchy now. So you can try to go through there again. I did it again. Let's see if I might do it again. Let's see if I can. If I can switch over, give you guys a better view. He's gonna go for a landing. He's gonna try to fly through there again. There he goes, heading for it. There he goes. Watch out! Watch out! It looks like he hit the ground. Oh, he tore off his wing that time. Oh, crashed. <laughs> Oops. Hey, he went through the third time. That. Huh? <laughs> Went through there once too often. Crashed. Let's see what else is going on. There's another pilot right there. So he, he already he already made his like uh, he already made his uh, his uh this flight there so what you do afterwards after you've made the uh got to the end there and like uh what i'm trying to say is once you've completed the flight you know if you crash after that thing like uh then you're okay you know, so you can play around all you want to kind of stuff like i said you don't really do these things in real life but when you're in condor you can have fun So he's dumping his water there. So he's probably made it. See how far he is from the airport. Sometimes they put the uh, the finish point far from the airport. Sometimes they're close to the airport. Depends on whoever do, whoever uh, whoever designed the task. And if you buy, if you get like a, if you get Condor, you can make your own task too. I don't know exactly how to do that. And, stuff, but, uh, and you can also do your own private ones, so that one I kind of know how to do. But uh, that one I do kind of stuff because I kind of like practice and stuff like that myself. And it's pretty fairly easy. It's like the beginning, we saw the beginning of the uh, stuff. Basically, you just fill in all those like uh, areas for stuff. And as you do it, you kind of learn what does what. Of all the people disconnected me have all landed and so uh they all said bye all said things so you can um if you do flat screen i believe you can like uh type in and communicate with other people and 
after hitting there is water in the grass. Like I said, it takes a long time to dump that water. The gas man can go down. Coming in for, I don't know if he's coming in for a landing or if he's going to do a flyby. These guys flaps down. See those, those inner things low. Oops. See those inner things towards his like fuselage. Those are his flaps. Yeah, looks like he's coming in for a landing. He's getting his side brakes out. coming in for a good landing. Like I said, we don't really use the runway because there's so many people and that kind of stuff, so. Unless you're by yourself, I, I generally use the, the runway myself. You know, the official runway. And there he is on the ground, safe and sound. Okay, so, uh, that's it for me. Uh, too bad I crashed. But you, could, you did get to see, you know, the spectator mode. And I will try to uh, record a uh, session of this particular flight. I'll show you how to, to load up and do it by yourself and uh, load up the, uh, this uh, flight plan and do it yourself and you can practice it and stuff like that. And you can practice all the, uh, you can practice all the uh, flights and, and stuff that, that you want and get better at it and, you know, and so forth and so on. All right. So that's it for me, and I'll see you next time.